Start recording. Recording. Well, so that's a, that's a time lapse. It gets much more interesting at the very end here, actually. No, this is the not the right one. I'm gonna go to the other one. Uh, Ken's uh, uh, finished up some chats with his family. Oh. Okay, this one. Five minutes. So this takes us through the day. What we saw yesterday, there was not a house up to the first floor trusses yesterday. Now there is. Here's the process. Actually gets quite nice at the end, but um, yeah, some impressions from yesterday. Fun. I think it was pretty cool, like it w went up pretty fast. The pad is all over the place, it's not even, so we had those issues. And one big learning I would say is that we definitely want to pay attention to that. Like, this is kind of like our multi-purpose pad, like our learning pad, our launch pad, because yeah. uh, this, is, this was done all by us, part of the workshop, novices. Uh, it was pretty good, but um, not actually not good enough to, to get little gaps like, there's probably like one inch gaps somewhere here and there where the tops were a little uneven in places. Uh, so, and we did fight that. We did spend a little bit of time, oh, like we had to drop one of these modules down to align things. Um, one point also that I saw as a mistake was actually that one of the uh, rim joists wasn't, was, we ended up 32 minus one inch on one side for some reason. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it was, uh, Katarina said like, how could people measure that? And maybe, we, we traced it to Hampus. I don't know. <laughs> so, which no, one? I don't know. Which that one? The only reason, like, why you would... So we've got uh, one of the rim joists is 32 feet minus one inch. And I asked Katrina, how can that happen? Wait, wait which are the rim joists? Roof the two by twelves? I don't know if you were... Were you on that team? I was one cutting the project. Yeah, yeah, those. I, I'm responsible. So. But the, the idea there is like, the no, only I'm way it could happen is um, if you're like not used to inches maybe. No, we were just doing the measuring together. For some reason it was like 32 minus one inch. So we had a 16 foot and a 15 foot 11 piece. Yeah. So I one, don't know how. one piece was slightly shorter. I think I cut off yeah. all okay. those. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably my bad. So okay. I, I don't blame so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we were thinking like, how could people uh, mismeasure that? And we said, okay, well, if you're not used to inches, uh, then you could you could be like, oh, maybe that's that was the thing. But so at the end of it, if the house that's is crooked, we're like, yeah, we have one European and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But beyond that, so it's in that far corner. That's that corner's got a gap, and I was like, what's going on? Because the OSB has to go all the way to the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And I thought, oh, what's going to happen there? Because it's going to be like hanging over. Mm -hmm. But no, everything else otherwise is 32 by 16, so we'll just, it was just this one little piece that was not reaching the end, but no problem. Yeah. Um, beyond that, yeah man, it was going, oh, so some data points, uh, I don't know if you saw from yesterday, but 3.5 minutes per, with two teams, so each panel ended up going up in 3.5 minutes on average. So I, I look at the videotape, the, the time-lapse interval, we have the camera set here at three seconds interval and then this is getting played back at 30 frames per second uh, but it turns out to be one hour 15 minutes for all 22 walls 30 seconds per frame oh, uh, well frame per, this is just like regular playback 30 frames per second but the time lapse was we're taking a snapshot every three seconds mm -hmm. so th that's what we have here it's quite exciting mm -hmm. it's all good yeah, but um, I think one hour, fifteen minutes for until this point here, where we framed in the. I, I think like the door. Uh, there were certain things that we didn't expect. For example, the steel plates that yeah. were not like aligned. I think it was a, a major. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. Like. And yeah. As well, you know, yeah. So this, these are not real numbers. Yeah, I think we can, well, I think we can cut it down. I yeah. Cut it down by another thirty seconds if we tab the sill, and then lean the uh, lean the have all the modules lined up right beside each other and just start leaning them up. One thing we found out was a major issue is that the sill plate, because it's treated lumber, it happens to be between like definitely like at least a quarter over the nominal five point five inch dimension, which destroyed our plan with the tabs. 
which we had to, a lot of them we had to take off or modify. Um, so, but not a real number, it is a real data point, it's real data, <laughs> but it means we can, yeah. we can do much better actually yeah. because it was under some ex extenuating conditions where, no, it, we did not have that smooth workflow, we had to fight things. So this is actually really good. And if you were to uh, actually take a look at, uh, I'll play the other one from the other angle, which is, which w wasn't actually no, as exciting. That's another angle, but yeah, really good. And if you take a, if you took a look at one team going each way, that number was 7.2 minutes per module. Um, we said like, oh yeah, we're going to do it in five minutes. So, I mean, that's pretty good, like clo close to five minutes. Uh, definitely under 15 minutes, uh, which was like the best case scenario in a first house. Like 15 minutes was the shortest. So, I mean, we're, we're doing well. It's good. There's definitely a vision of, wow, this coming right up. You know, you're doing a build for somebody else and we're doing well. Does Menards guy say anything? Uh, they said that the no, the only thing they said is the lap siding for the exterior is late. That's all. <laughs> uh, that's that's all. Um, pretty good, pretty good. So, what are some other thoughts from yesterday? Um, yeah. Uh, so if the if we do the tabs on the thing and uh, on the sill plate rather, I, and the all of the models were lined up together. Then you could just lean them up, and the, the that silk plate would be there, and you could just zip in the screw as soon as it's in there, which will pull it in in situations where you want to pull things together. Because um, really, uh, tabs and 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 uh, that top uh, um, silk plate were were the only things that were really a problematic, uh, and the tabs ended up being yeah more problem more our only uh, big problems. I have, I have one. The bottom, yeah. And I, I, I think uh, it's something we should address. That it's um, uh, uh, drilling the joist frame into the OSB. I think, like, you, you get what yeah. I mean? Like, uh, putting the, the, the joist frames. Uh, we were, we the our screws were too long. long. We just need a certain screws, right? Like I, I don't know. I don't know if that's that's the right thing to do. Maybe we should put it in an angle or uh, drilling it from below. But like all these nails going out, it's I, I don't think it's the best. It's way. dangerous. No, those screws were too long. Uh -huh. We could get like one and a half inch screws, and at that point, but do you think hardly like the joist, like the joist frames should be attached. To the, to the OSB or to a... They eventually will be, because actually it's the OSB that connects that section of the house to the bottom portion of the house. We've got all that 100 feet of OSB all around. That's That has significant force in terms of keeping that in high wind conditions. That's part of the stabilization the OSB, of the entire yeah, house. Is, is there any little living connection between... Sh shear structure, uh, yes. Shear and structure. Is, yeah. is, is there any other um, supportive connection between the joists and the rest of the frame, or is it only yeah. tied to the OSB? There's hurricane ties, okay, which we haven't done. So, where we have, I feel much better that way. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah right. definitely. Um, so all the joists after they come up, hurricane time between the joist and a and the top plate. There, like, you know, after you have a joist wherever you have it, say you got it, you got them right there hurricane tie between each one and the rest of the house so top plate the two top plates there that's that's that so we have those okay I feel, I feel much better now that yeah yeah like that's industry there. standard there's yeah the OSB then insulation and then then a block of wood is that what you're talking about mm, no um, okay never mind uh, what do we call it hurricane fasteners yeah. Is that iron? It's called it's a hurricane. Or nail bolt. Okay. That's what we do. Um, so this is in the top plate. This is into the joist. Okay. So we'll I, do that. I had a thought about yesterday, is that it, and uh, it's the fact that we spent no time at all assigning wall module teams. So we have this little free-for-all uh, kind of chaotic process where three people might work on that module and then it's like uh, 
to new people for the next one with one of them and nobody really knows how to communicate. Mm -hmm. So what you should have probably is the right amount of person per wall module installation where everybody can just like, okay, Anthony, uh, we've got a little gap in the lower corner instead right. of people so just screaming at each other and like going to the other team or whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, it's rather amazing how much work we did given that we spent no time allocating it. So the, the, the constraint design and such well, they're, they're, they're so I completely agree with that like the same team does the same thing ever, but there needs to be a runner because everybody needs something. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. That that was one of the key things that I was like running around just getting people stuff, and then yeah. while I was there, I was like, "Oh, you also need me to do?" You know? And then but you know, if we had done that like a perfect allocation with the runners and trying the roles, could we have done it two minutes per module, one and a half? Like, yeah, almost oh. probably. Yeah, like you're talking about the still the fence, yeah. Wide. Yeah, because I, 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 I agree with you, like, um, new teams get formed sometimes, and then they, they change roles, although this, you kind of want to, I know I wanted to, like, do a little bit of everything, too, so I could dabble in it, yeah, you know which, what I mean? Yeah, which is Maybe good. Maybe a starting team, and then just allow the flexibility. Any way where, where people are hearing each other and focus on what people are doing, uh, you know, like, getting someone's way, uh, someone's missing a nail, you can notice and, and bring it and just be sort of connected with each other. But if it's a chaotic structure with just flowing around, it gets harder. So maybe a, instead of a runner in between teams, there's one runner per team, and then he just focuses on that team, the other one focuses on that team, and then the others are just in, in Yeah. Or, you build enough of small modules and put them up, you would know what is the perfect amount of person and what is the perfect amount of uh, uh, roles. Yeah. Maybe just starting with a team with teams is good because then you have a baseline and then from there you can kind of yeah. know, morph a little bit. And then it might be good to have a like a head runner, sort of, because the on the teams you might need all all the bodies for a particular task. So I don't mind being being that person. Uh -huh. I like running. <laughs> I like being a runner, so okay. I'm willing to do that. Mm -hmm. But there's also the, that, that component where um, it felt like if I was just standing there w waiting for a little bit of amount of time and I could see something else needed to be done, it was calling me. That's why yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, we had fun. It was, we had a good time. Yeah. It was uh, amazing like that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. Kind of flexibility for morphing would be good. To just like, start with a baseline and then know that that's going to happen. Yeah. Because it's a bit dangerous if two persons trying to do two different things on each side of the module. That's true. Yeah. yeah. We, and we had that issue early, but it, it seems like we even adjusted for that a little bit. You know, I was like calling out, like, yeah. I'm about to put a screw in it. Yeah. What's the uh, ordained chaos? Yeah. yeah. So, um, what are some of the next steps here? Um, any so other we comments? Second floor wall modules and uh, drywall. Yes, yeah, oh, so there's uh, a there's a whole bunch of steps. So let's kind of like put this on the on the map. Um, so the options are, uh, I would say we kind of keep the momentum in terms of going up on the house. There's uh, definitely first floor to finish. Well, let's let's just take a look at all the tasks. Like there's obviously there's the aperture module, so windows. And as far as the windows, um, we can on the first floor we can frame them frame them in, like now. On the second floor, we want to pre-build them in the modules. Mm -hmm. um, windows are so let's call it first floor windows. That's one task. Um, now the problem is, uh, so they did not arrive yesterday on the truck. Someone has to would have to get them because they're kind of fragile. They didn't want to put them on the truck, so. One person would have to go to Menards to this extract six windows. We got four for the top floor, two for the two for this. So yeah, they're open today. So well, that's something to that they coordinate. They transport them because they were fragile. <laughs> like yeah, they're kind of fragile, so they didn't want to put them on the top of the truck there. So that's they they would like have to. <laughs> Do it on a separate truck. So so you, you, um, uh, you do it. <laughs> yeah, you you break out. it. Yeah. So okay, but let's keep going on. So there's a door. There's the carport door. So we don't have windows. No. It's not necessarily a block because we have many options. So let's look at all that we have. So. Yeah. 
windows, first floor, there's the double door. So none of these things came came with the shipment, the double door and the, ex, the exterior doors, they're not. That, we make that double door won't fit in there from the thing? That's inside of your, your shop? Because we have... We have oh, we actually have... Uh, the CV like we have that, that double door. We can actually use that. Uh -huh. So we're actually we welcome that. to use that. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Uh, another, but also, like if we take the van to the store, that, that won't fit in the van. So we'd have to get a trailer. So, okay. Double door. We have the door here. And that'll provide a little bit more structural stability to that little area, too. What else we got? Then... At this point, we can put on the subfloor. That's the second story on the platform on the on the joists. Before that, we need to make that stem wall, which is effectively a nine, basically a nine, two nine foot modules that sit under the opening, the stairway opening. Right, right, right. That's not structural right now. We can't really be walking up there, or a bunch of people can't be up there. So that's the stem walls, call it the, what do we call that, the stairway that's support, the stairway support really. Um, that's effectively a nine foot module, uh, two, two, two 40, 48 inch wide modules you can put under there and put like a spacer oh, yeah. and we can nail it into the floor and then screw it into the top. But yeah, that needs to, because once we get all that weight on top there with a lot of people, yeah, that, that that's not gonna hold. There's house wrap, which has all these dependencies here. Oh, yes. And which has also the dependence of, there's the couple of the cracks the adjustment panels. So if we cut the window holes, we wrap the house, we just leave it alone, and we'll cut the we'll cut out the wrap when the windows get here then? We can actually um, don't need the windows for the house wrap to, to come in. But what is a prerequisite for the for the house wrap? Well cutting out the window though, isn't it? If you want to cut it out so it'll yeah. be easy to slice whatever it yes. comes on so as far as the windows we need to put on the osb and cut out exactly the profile for a 36 the rough opening there is 36. Good. so on uh, the full detail it's actually we have the full detail so if you go back to the dock the working dock from before how do you find it too many links so i would go to sh3 build instructions And it's the, fir the first, the big dock here, this one. We have the full detail. So what's the window look like? It's exactly on slide. That's, there we go, right here. It's even got the part, the, all the cut list. Right now we have just the aperture, which is just, just the vertical. We don't have these interiors, like all this. All this interior stuff is not there, but we can follow this exactly. All the dimensions are there. So if you pull that up, it's exactly what we have to do. After that, once again, the plywood is still staggered to make it fit just like normal. And then cut out exactly the aperture of the window. Once we have that, the house wrap can go on it. Right. So that's the, that's the windows. The crack, oh, we need to, what, what do you do for the cracks, the adjustment points? They're, they're about the size of a two by two by. Uh, possibly even a two by might fit in there if you ram it in. Uh, probably what we want to do is cut strips, which are half inch plywood. Definitely two will fit, maybe three. We can possibly cut like one that's out of quarter. We probably have some of that lying around. So actually we have this big pile of wood. What I would actually ask is, um, um, since scaffolding is also an issue for today, let's take a look at our wood supply in the very back. So maybe we can take the whole team, do like maybe 10 minutes of of uh, putting that stuff under the, the the protected area and taking some stuff for scaffolding. Uh, so we can take the car back there, load it up on the back of the car. But uh, there's material like quarter inch material, quarter ply, there's half ply. Uh, but that's very simple, 5.5, five, 5 long strips, fit like two or three. 
Um, structurally wise, um, it's effectively like, well, we've got walls on top, on either side. Structurally, it's important that we just bond that together to the other, uh, to what's around it. But that's that's a pretty easy. But that's but that's that would be a team. There's two of those. What we ended up doing is fitting or, uh, yeah, building the two other adjustment modules in place. So those are already done, uh, which which is another way to do it. Uh, I would probably prefer that we have them to install. Maybe I don't know. I, I guess in terms of time, how do people think? I think that we framed them up like very quickly. It worked so well. It worked well, so you could adjust. Have just that like almost like just for you. It's almost like we didn't need to do them. Now it would be a little harder on a second floor because you're at height there. You can't get it from one side. And then you just got to work from one side. So it's kind of you're on a ladder there. It's maybe a little more dangerous. So probably would definitely do it for the second floor. On the first floor, it turns out it was quite easy to do them right in place. It was very quick. Um, okay. Double door. So what happens for the double door? This is um, page 15 here. Uh, do we have detail on that? Yes, we do. So here's uh, 15 is exactly what we have there. Um, well, we have to do minus everything except for the top sill stuff, right? Because we have everything else. We have, uh, so we have everything Are as we? is here only thing missing is the plywood yeah. so all you need to do is do this so that's already laid out long eight footer two short strips like that the dimensions are given we can follow that that's our finish for now before the door ready for house wrap so we can wrap around that All the dimensions uh, should be I mean there's notes on this dimensions so whoever is that team that's the double door now um, at the point of the cracks finished and even not the even that's not even a dependence because you can do that from the inside too well then there's that little strip left there at the outside. So are we, are we going to have a, a full-on cutting team that is just going to we're going to collect all the, the cuts and then? So we're, it's a way to do it. Let's let's talk about uh let's let's keep going because there's a couple more tasks. Cracks, windows, carport door, double door. After that, this is wrap. That all goes into house wrap. <coughs> We're ready for house wrap at that point on the first floor. And then we can continue further. Uh, stair support, that's another task. Subfloor. Stair support is a prerequisite for subfloor. Mm -hmm. uh, because we don't want to have too many people up there before that. But that's quick. That's just two quick modules. And that three quarter plywood is pretty heavy, so. What are the, uh, what are the instructions for those modules? Those support walls because they're not the same height, they don't have a sill plate underneath them. They don't have a sill plate, so what we do, we can do the same as before, put a sill plate on, put another four foot long, because I think we've got a few of those left. Mm -hmm. Put one on the bottom, put one at the top, and that should just about fit. If it doesn't fit, so uh, put some little shims in there. We'll need two headers, a double thickness header, right? Uh, the just, the it already has one header on it, so we just need one. I yeah, believe. Okay. yeah. Mm. So, so four, think four by eight, give it an extra bottom and top plate, yeah. mm -hmm. and two of those, that's it. Okay, OSB uh, on it? No, don't need it. In common module don't sizing need it right now. Fine. It'll be interior plywood. It's going to be pretty stiff. It's like, it's all about downward bearing. Mm -hmm. So, okay. uh, racking, not really, because you're pretty plumb. stable. Just yeah, just yeah. plumb. <laughs> yep. Um, that would have interior plywood on it later. Did you say four by eight? Sorry, four by nine. Uh, nine foot pre cut studs. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, we know. Yep. Um, you could even, do if I think we have the two by sixes, but even two by fours would work for that. Um, well, I mean, we're just thinking about doing a, another regular module with just a regular plate, module. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's all. That's all. Um, 
we have the materials for that, so we're good. Next, if we... Subfloor takes you to the second sill plate, which we were, are not going to find because it's not going to be treated lumber right now. We wanted to get the sill plate for alignment purposes. Now, this is for, so, second sill plate. Second floor. So we once again want the rail to align the walls perfectly. Other comment about the top plate, I like it how we can put it against the OSB and then we just punched it down and all just aligned. That was good. You want to repeat that? We're going to have the same idea where the second story modules pretty much mirror of everything except for different window sizes. But once again, we pre-frame, no, no, the windows we actually have to put in now. We don't want to work that at height. So, uh, but all the other modules are pretty much analogous to the former ones, except there is no double door. Those are just, uh, okay, let's look at the house picture. Let's just go to seed home two. Just one, that's how it looks. Um, that's what we're building. So instead of the double door, we've got two more windows. So that's the corner. That's one, two, three, four, five is regular. Windows, adjustment corner like before. So we pretty much mirror the kind of pattern we did with the first floor modules, except now instead, instead of using two by two by six, nine foot pre-cut, we're using two by six, eight foot pre-cut. And uh, why not nine? Well, nine gets really tall up there, and it's, you don't really need that. Um, you're at height. I mean, once you're standing at the top of the roof, it feels pretty high. It doesn't really look like it from here, but this is actually quite tall. You'll see it. Like, once you're on the first floor, it, it's quite a height, even from the first floor. So, um, sill plate team. After the sill plate, you can get into the, the actual second story walls. So, wall. Walls and windows and all that. Now, yeah, that means building the modules in congruence with the people that are starting from the the top left, right? So yes. that'll be going this on while well. people build <coughs> modules so they're ready for whenever we're we're coming down. Yeah, we have to talk about how many bodies we have in terms of role allocation here, so we'll, we'll see. Okay. But let's just go. So the last thing that we can consider, we talked about the wood pile and getting some scaffolding. Uh, why do we need scaffolding? At the point where we put the modules up, we can do that all from inside, actually, from on top of the, the first floor. But what happens to the siding at the end of the day and the house wrap? The house wrap and actual siding remain unaddressed. So we'd want to do scaffolding. Now what I would propose for scaffolding is uh, two ladders and a, uh, a two by 12. <laughs> Check out this cunning plan <laughs> right here. So we've got the top view. And first of all, the question is what height would be the most appropriate for scaffolding? What do we have to do? We have to do house wrap and the exterior siding, which we did not touch yet. It's this 3 8 it's actually 5 16 cement board. It's got, it's pretty much lifetime exterior material. That comes in four by eights. So that means the first floor is ending, we got eight foot, and then from then we have to go up. So it would make sense probably to put the scaffolding, you know, like seven, eight feet. We have to screw to the top of that uh, we could also go over from the roof, but, you know, so, so the house is front of the house, first floor, you got your second story platform, second floor, you got your roof platform and another insulation box. This distance here is 16 inches. So yeah, you can have a person on the roof <laughs> try to... <laughs> So the siding is going to end up like right here. That's the eight foot mark. Eight foot mark. So you kind of have to get familiar with this. What is that point up here? That's 20 feet. So we're getting up to 20 feet. We're using like two and a half 
all the way two and a half. So actually, the, it's going to be quite challenging to get the second layer above. That's 20 foot mark. So the scaffolding I would propose would be here. I'll be level the scaffolding. Because uh, 16 only gets you halfway up the second story walls, man. So we still have to address that. That, that actually gets um, 16 foot mark is the top top of the exterior siding there. What do we do there? Man, I think we're going to have to go from here yeah, it's two and scaffolding. just do ladders on the scaffolding. Because uh, this, this is kind of tough. You can get the very, very top, like the last very top row if you like reach over that, hanging off the roof. But um, you, you can get, this, this is our kind of like danger zone here. Uh, we don't have, without scaffolding, I don't see how we can do that. Uh, so the, for the scaffolding, what's the concept? Okay, top view. So this is front. Top view. What I would suggest is at 8 feet we take like a 2 by 12, attach it right to the house like that. Attach it to the house like that. And the same at each corner. Because we got a firm connection to the house. That's good. Um, do that. And then what we would would need is here you can do um, so how do you get an eight foot structure what I would do actually is just frame in just like your kind of regular module just put it under under these so we make make two of these these things here just frame up structures then you can span a bunch of boards across that across that that. We got plenty of wood to do that. What if, so if, if, but if, if, what's if, the easiest outside of renting some more scaffolding, which we'd probably need like all around if you wanted to work all around? If I'm looking at what you're saying correctly, we could use modules that we're building for the second floor as the components to the rest of the scaffolding upon. Yeah, but after we put them on, what do we do then? We do actually have um, mm -hmm. interior modules that are sitting in a pile though, which are actually already eight feet. We could do that. There's a pile of uh, pre-framed two by four modules. So. Um, how many would we need to actually span it all around? I mean, we can work one side at a time and then move everything Make over. Uh, yeah, these these you can carry right over. And yeah, you just put the boards on it. So, at the minimum, we though we would need like four of them. So that's you know, let's maybe figure it out for one side. Uh -huh. But uh, those crosses in the corner that yeah. support the, the planks on should they do they need any support from below too? Well, that's why that's they have underneath. The, yeah. Oh, so they're even in the corners too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So four of them. So, so there's one. Yeah. Well, something like this. I mean, I think that would be pretty quick to make. Yeah, yeah. And then you just you uh you zip the 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 modules that are below to the uh the new board on on top. Zip tie. If if the boards here, like the two by twelve spanning ten feet, that that's pretty good. We got a bunch of those boards in the wood storage. We can use that. Um, so any other ideas on that, or does that sound decent? And then how do you get to the eight foot mark? Ladder on the sides, you know, so we're going up there. And we'll see from there. Uh, that, that, something like that. That will be more or less the last step for today. Uh, well, let's see. That's kind of like thinking into the future, because we've got, for this to be needed, that's actually at the step of the siding. So that's after. But it's also before the house wrap. Like if we wanted to do house wrap on the second floor, yeah, this is what we'd start with. House wrap is that the outer panel? <coughs> no, it's the white, <laughs> very thin. It's like polyethylene. It's it on the outside. Uh, the yeah. Yeah. It's a rain guard, water water guard. A uh, temporary water guard. or no, no, that's, okay. that goes under the siding. How tall? Um, how tall is house wrap? How, how tall is the house? Ten. That's ten. Two layers of ten, so actually... Yeah, that was a good thing on Katarina to get the two tens. So, so it actually spans pretty much okay. to the top. So we wrap the first layer and then put the scaffolding up. Yeah, yeah. So and then we need why coordinate. do we want to get into the 16 feet? Like, well, so what do we do there? Uh -huh. Well, I would say here we got... Because the way we're going to put the module, right, like first. Like the second floor models. Yeah, I mean before this, before the scaffolding, and we're we kind of like at the walls. After that, it's install them and scaffolding. Uh -huh. 
uh, second story walls. Actually, that gets into house wrap on a on a second floor. So we had house wrap one, and then after these walls, it's house wrap two. Because but there's plenty of work here in yeah. the window, so uh, yeah. don't worry we about that. We, we're yeah, not that's getting good. there. So that's kind of the overview where it could go. Second story walls and then wrap two. But we're gonna have to do the crack team and the Yeah. This this all happens so cracks, windows, cardboard um, door. cardboard door, double door. That's all like cutting the plywood stuff and maybe finishing up if there's framing missing on that, according to the the document, uh, stair support, subfloor. I don't know. I think subfloor sill plate. This is likely. We can possibly start some. No, I mean this this could actually go quite quickly. We we can definitely do a lot of this. Like we'll yeah, we can do a lot of the second story walls already. Yeah, I feel like two questions. Make that um, first. first is if yeah. we're once we get to that scaffolding. Screwing it into the frame of the house means that we can't wrap that part. Yeah, so it would have to be after. Yeah, I think that would be number one. So, uh, wrap one. After this, we're ready for scaffolding, but not before. So we'll have to yeah. screw in the scaffolding to the house above where it's been wrapped, so there's no punctures to the wrap. I've already got 48. The wrap is kind of Yeah, it's actually after. Or do we do patch up? Is wrap something you can patch up once you punch it? You can you can patch that up. That's okay. that's not too critical. Okay. House wrap. And then, uh, but on the first floor, there's still siding, which uh, means you probably want to put the scaffolding right above. Well, it kind of gets in your way. Uh, can we puncture that siding there? Yeah, I mean, a few screw holes won't be too bad. Could we put it slightly above the siding so that you don't have to? Uh, if well, you do that, you then, it again. Yeah. then you don't have a place to now do the second story exterior siding. Gotcha. So you got to yeah. poke yeah. in somewhere. Could we could we wrap at the tail end of the day? Maybe we wrap both yeah. stories? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah we'll probably need to take yeah, down the scaffolding in between, no? Because there's going to get a lot of punctures in that nice new wrap if, if, if we're doing some scaffolding stuff. Yeah. Could, we possibly, could we possibly put the scaffolding up, get the second store wall modules without the first house wrap, begin with the second yeah. house wrap on the second floor, take down yeah. the scaffolding, and then fasten it. Ooh, because the scaffolding it. is the 8 feet, and the first floor oh, yeah. wrap is at 10 feet. Oh, wrap the, the second floor first? I wonder if that works. Yeah. yeah. We'll wrap the first scaffolding above the first. But I'm just a Swede who doesn't understand imperial <laughs> measure, so. I think what's important about that is, um, and, and I'm not certain, but I would think that you want to have um, a higher level yeah. over top of the top of, of a lower level so that water will run off without. Yeah, that's that's, that's the only thing, yeah. So you could just remove it all, and then we'll wrap the first one, and then the second one either either way. We can do that with top yeah. of the ladders and, you know. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, maybe I misunderstood your idea, but move the scaffolding up so the bottom of the boards is <coughs> at the 10 foot mark if that's not too tall. And then you can do the whole first floor wrap. You can secure the top of the wrap, take your scaffolding off, and now you can just use ladders to secure the bottom of the second layer of wrap. Because now it'll be over the lap. Yeah, you, you want to install first floor first with wrapping and then second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If that's what we need to do, then I think. Yeah, but that would require you to move your. Um, yeah, it's it's easy. Uh, so as far as the house wrap part, this is e easy to conceptualize because after that, um, see where's the scaffolding? Only after this step are we at the scaffolding. The first siding on the first floor, all the windows, all of that. Um, I can conceptualize the being on the ground and wrapping the first layer, doing this, this and siding, and then scaffolding. So we do this on ladders and stuff. This, this here would be scaffolding here. Okay. Is there a way to build the scaffolding? 
safe enough where it does not have to be screwed into the house? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's the other thing, thing. yeah. I'm gonna build one with that. four, four, I'm gonna take four of those things and, yeah. and make them a thing and then put a piece of probably three, maybe half or three quarter. Yeah, we could do that, you could like brace it and stuff. Yeah, and then um, but still it. the safest is to get a screw into the house. Yeah. I mean, you don't want it to, you don't want uh, your weight tax to like yeah. push it and then, it's, you know. But yeah, this is nice, but I mean, it's always going to get in the way, so maybe like standalone. It can take things. a screw. Yeah, and you're risking on the ground. The house will. I'm thinking the wrap, though. Like the we're not, we're, we're not doing the wrap until we're done. But you'll need the scaffolding to get, to get stuff on top. No, you can just, you just ladder it. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. You can just so, um, okay. until the siding. I mean, the siding. That's a, that's another deal. Like that's after. Well, like oh. after house wrap is actually. It's uh, we kind of forgot to talk about the windows. The actual window install. Um, actual windows, like where we actually put them in and weatherproof them. Also, but that, that's not a today. T are we are we looking at like all the tasks we need to complete the project or? No, uh, we, we started that today, but we kind of are getting, <laughs> yeah, right, right. getting carried away. Uh, so the actual windows are here, then the siding, and then the scaffolding here. So let's not worry about the scaffolding too much. I mean, we've got plenty of, plenty uh -huh. of uh -huh. tasks here. We only got twelve people that are showing up right now, so. Um, and question two about the um, yeah. those places where we need to put shims under yeah, the modules. In prints. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah. Shims the under the modules. That? Well, so once we have those, um, the best place to actually look at it is the cat I pulled up yesterday, uh, just to see how it looks. Uh, from Seed Home 2, we had the CAD and we had the yeah what's this look like so we showed this thing the second story framing oh wait no we'd have to go actually back to this one about the, the first yeah. Yep. It's essentially a wall that supports where we cut out the stairway. So let's just take a look at that, what it looks like in practice. In practice, if you go inside, this is. Oh wait, why? Why is that the second? First floor. right here so if you go inside that's what we have this is the wall uh, let's hide a few of these things here but that's that's what we're talking about these it's actually 10 foot span <clears throat> but we just said let's put like two like one here and this one here and one here uh, but that's where, what's where going on in there okay. the jo those are and here this is because that's you know that's an interior wall it's actually a two by uh, two by four in this but let's just do two okay. by six here Mark, yep now that you get the monologue, yep the top plate those modules where do those intersect the joists or that um, the stair so there they're like that. They're like right on the edge there. Because you gotta. <coughs> yeah. 
thing because that's what's the uh if you zoom out just a little bit on the wall there's like a foot up in the ground is like a uh, a little hole yeah. What's, what's that going on there? Yeah. Those are nine foot modules. Actually, are electrical channels. We're going to run electrical in those, so they're easily accessible. Gotcha. So it's actually a modular electrical system. So we're doing like a uh, mylar piece over the top of it that you can just like screw in, screw out? No, it's, um, <clears throat> it's a little different. We're running each of the modules that we already <clears throat> built in the other house, uh -huh. already has the outlets in there. So all we do is after that, we run wires al along these channels and just connect them to those boxes from the from the actual breaker box. Um, we'll do okay. that in practice. Maybe it's, it's a little complicated, but but yeah, this complication here with the utility channel, like we always had that piece of bottom blocking uh, in there, which we're avoiding now. That's because the interior siding right now we're going to put battens to mount it, so we didn't need that bottom bottom piece of blocking. Like right there, uh, we didn't need that that wood there. But anyway, that's that's the that's basically support walls for so that these joists, which are bearing all the weight. Uh, okay, so if you look at the load paths here, where is all the weight of this? Hmm. That's the support. Yeah, mm -hmm. all the weight right now, as you see this this one stud here, and the end one here that this one and that one are bearing all this weight here so if this these screws here they're going to be the first to go uh, you need support underneath that um, to the tune of like I mean the rating is like 20 pounds per square foot so over that you know 10 by 12 120 square feet you're holding like 2,400 pounds on these screws here and screws at the end there. That's not going to do it. So you need a no the walls American back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Burn but that's pretty cool. Actually, like if you look at this, there's actually like it's not a common way to build stairs. If you if no, I'm looking can, at it now. <laughs> uh, look at that. It's actually a way to get away from the stringers, the complicated step yeah, yeah. pattern. Hey, just put a board underneath it and support it with that, but at the cost of doubling up the steps, so it's two two by twelves. But that's a thing; people do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can do this very simple stair design without the complicated. And, that's and, and those go into the, the support. Right? Really so it's really hard. It's really hard. So this that's is that's a way a that a novice can do stairs with high quality, cool. and the supports there are just one on one side and one on the other. There's nothing in the middle. Um, which means that also like we're getting out the squeaks out of this stair set because uh, in a standard set with three stringers, if you have the outside, inside, outside, inside, and mid, three points are very hard to get perfectly level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you have to be really good at it to not have the little squeak. But also what we're doing, like in the, in the version that we're going to build to eliminate noise, we're going to put a little sill gasket underneath that. That's what we actually plan doing. Because our experience in a CD home, mm -hmm. those stairs are loud. Like when you walk, it's like a big <laughs> drum, you know? Because there is no, yeah. there is no like softening anywhere. We're not using carpet or anything like that. So we're going to actually put a little sill gasket underneath that. So one for squeaks and two for noise reduction because we're trying to pay attention to the noise. Like right now, the CD go home, one weak point is in an open space. You do have a lot of noise transferring throughout the house. What, what so is from the very beginning, we designed that as like a, a cabinetry. Like it's one of the very few things I've seen to be able to use the space underneath stairs effectively is like you do it as oh, cabinets. Oh, but it is. But do it's a closet. It, so then like Walk-in closet there. Do the whole thing as, uh, uh, oh, I see. So you want it as a closet. That's a door there and that's a walk-in closet there. Oh uh, well, the door would be at the end there, but yeah, that's usable space, so we're using that as. So closet. if we did it as cabinetry, though, like every yeah. two feet could be that. a support post. Yeah, yeah, you could do you could do something that's like that. Here, uh, what we're doing is we're just taking the walls that are there, which we, which we hid. because we want to span across studs so we made them so long so that we 
let's go back to my assumption that, that they're going into the railings that is okay important. so for example look at that one this one here uh, yeah. you can't just so end it there so you need a two point uh, attachment in order for that to be hanging but that properly that doesn't exist anymore the other two um, will our spacing here was 16 inches so this piece here this member here has to be at least 16 inches to reach across two studs yeah, yeah. and then there's some spacing there so we made them all uniform so we don't have to worry about their specific lengths well, yeah uh, we're, we're only doing two modules under there uh, two modules that's it okay Does that we'll do the stairs in the other house so this is we look forward to that I want to see these stairs okay. yeah um, in this house we're gonna quit it at the frame the main bulk structure we'll do all the finish like in, including the stairs and everything in the other house mm -hmm. yeah so back to um, uh, I'm seeing that yeah so that's that allows us to walk on a on a second story then there's the sill plate we can start making much but really it's how many bodies we have here uh, what can we do oh, here also Ooh. merchant what I was asking about before was actually these little gaps at the bottom yeah and shimming those yeah what's the how is that done the industry standard for that is to get it right in the first place <laughs> so we don't have them <laughs> but I was wondering is that like oh. <laughs> but I mean, the thing is, is that if we're if we're solving, if we have them, but if we're solving housing for people that are, yeah. you know, the the deal is that they may not they may not have access to concrete professional concrete people, and there may be. Well, we are, there is an answer for that actually because yeah. in our current pad we made this big structure. If you make just the sixteen by thirty two, mm -hmm. you can you can level it pretty well. Okay. Novices can level it very well. And then you have the very clear frame boundary that's the very precise mm -hmm. height pretty easily to a quarter inch, like okay. eighth inch. So it is actually doable. As long as you do the forms right, mm -hmm. then you do the scree board. But in here, we're like we in the middle of the so field. Okay. Yeah, we did it so big and we're like in the middle, we're like between two pores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's very hard, that's okay. very hard. I, I was thinking about... So uh, but yeah, it's quite doable to do it. Like the first one I did, yeah, okay. it was quite quite good. Uh, not mm -hmm. too hard, you just have to take the time to align the forms properly, that's sure. all. I, yeah. I, w I was thinking about uh, maybe you creating, uh, or somebody creating a, a little video series called Critical Components. Yeah. Um, there's really three critical components that, that make the house like perfect, uh, perfect in level like the way we want. And the first critical component is the is the concrete. And we just give some basic tips on how to make sure it's level, how to, um, and then another critical component is the corners with the, our arches, teaching that immediately out of the gate. So uh, because that was that was like the perfect way to get them. Um, and then the third one was uh, uh, validation, validation of said other two, right? How you validate, but and and check everything. Mm -hmm. And I think those like little critical components. Um, for novices, you know, you, yeah. you're just like, these are the most, I know you have your most yeah. common errors and, and, and things that you've learned on things, just like a critical components thing for regular people, I think would really help. Yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, hi, this is what we've messed up in the past, don't let it happen <laughs> to you. <laughs> my, my question is, what are we going to do about this today? Do we we can leave anything? it, we can leave it because, uh, okay. well, remember right now, if we see that anything <laughs> settles, like, no, I think by the weight of the house, it's not, right now we don't have like enough weight in the house for that to be an issue. Oh, okay. I got because it. you've got that whole second story platform that's pretty stiff. Like you won't, it might, you know, just come down a little bit here and there, but I don't think it, it will. You, you probably won't notice. And this one's being so, taken down. And, and we're taking it down. Anyway, so, okay. Right, right. So okay. one of the things here, we're, we're quite tolerant on all these kinds of mistakes uh, because we're learning and it's an, it's an education thing that we're, recycling every quarter and mm -hmm. doing that, which I think is a good idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, pro professionally, yeah, we would not do it this way. We, we'd pay more attention. We'd start with the proper foundation and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, focusing on learning. Okay, Give it a as good long experience. as it's not gonna be, it's not, it doesn't need to be up there. Yeah, okay. yeah, it now doesn't, doesn't have to why. be up there. Cool. Um, and it actually takes a lot of stress off us, because right now, like, to fix that, we'd spend a bunch of time and like all these other details like for example the jagged like top plate there i mean we probably want to fix that it would kill all our time and all of that so we're kind of a little more lax so we can have more fun and still get the house up safely very safely mm -hmm. but, so, yeah yeah it's good so so teams next, like it's 
um, we need to go to Walmart to get the windows, right? To Menards. Menards, pick it up. Menards. But that's that's here. It's not a block. It's not. It's not an absolute. If someone can go, maybe okay. people who are not participating. If someone can go, yes, let's send them off. Mm -hmm. But these things, the stair support and subfloor, I think. Yeah, I think we kind of really want to be looking at um, this first, that's, that's, yeah. and, uh, and then we can get to sill plate, house wrap, walls. It'll be like uh, subfloor is going to be a bit of time. Uh, I mean, that's this is definitely afternoon stuff. If we get to it, but so the um, building the second floor modules is in the walls. The second yeah. walls. If we don't have people doing this, we this doesn't. It's not a dependency, but this is like installation dependency. But build dependency, it's not. Okay. We can do. I mean, this is actually green, green lighted right now. You know. Uh, but we need more people, maybe. Yeah, we need more people. So. Well, yeah, I would start. I was thinking about just starting because I can slang. We can slang those things out. Modules. Know, five, seven. Yeah, the, the basic modules. You know. Yeah. Couple eight footers. 48's already cut. Boom, 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 you know. Don't stair support, or we're, that's what we're gonna do first. Is yeah. cut the the stair supports. Stair support. Yeah, actually the stair support. You're starting I with the same frame as the second walls. But I mean, we already have them, right? We already have the the, the support. Stair support. Stair support. Do, do we have a couple of nine foot modules something. down there? Yeah. <laughs> we can. So like, there's a bunch of frame stuff we did for interior walls. We do already have a. I, I think we do have. No, no, we're all we're uh, doing. Let's not destroy it though, because we'll use it in another house. So we might as well start from scratch. Two regular modules, yeah. and two more plates. Yeah. Twice. It's quick. Um, double door. Let's putting in. What's the steps on a double door? You got to cut the plywood effectively. Now, uh, the, uh, on the doors. Those have to be cut as far as the sill plate. The sill plate gets cut out um, where it is right now. So yeah, we gotta cut it out because the floor actually sits on a sill, not on a sill plate. So um, there's a little cut there with a the reciprocating saw. Did anyone bring a reciprocating saw by any chance? Well, Nobody's got one. Jeff's got one. I just got uh, a cord I cordless have reciprocating a, uh, one. I have a Dewalt brushless. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that would be the tool for that. Um, um, I got blades. Might be. I mean, I, I think I might have a, a, a wood one on there that has some life in it. That's the, that might be one of the only crucial components. Blade on this table. Yeah. Yeah, we've got blades. We've got yeah. blades too. So that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Um, so cut out and then plywood. Now in a carport door, after we do the cutout, uh, the only note we have to make is that currently the cutout is 39. We need a, spa a one by spacer to make it 38 and a quarter for our door. So a spacer down the side, then we're ready for uh, the plywood cut. So for all the apertures, it's effectively Plywood cut, but before the plywood cut on the carport door, yeah, we got to put in the spacer. On a double door, we just cut, and then put the plywood according to the the document. Where does the spacer go? So on the right hand side, just all the way down, a, a one by six, all the way down, so that the aperture is not 39 but 38.225. One bys are three quarter of an inch. Um, for the windows. It's about, once again, look at the diagram and frame the rest of it in and do the cut. So there's a, not too much. I mean, there's, there's only a few pieces of wood that we need to put in there and then the cut. But, you know, this could be like, if you're working at it, it's like an hour. Or so. Yeah, we can have we can have the stairs um, done before lunch for sure. Um, and then the cutouts, is, uh, that's going to just depend on the, the uh, person cutting it. The subfloor is actually on the side of the way on the west side, we can put two pieces before getting into the aperture opening there where we can't walk. So actually, 
that's a green light on the side of the other side of the house. Are, are we going to put the, the seal with that stuff? Uh, yes, yeah, so typically what we did actually, because um, we were paying attention to noise, we actually put this, just little strips of this on the, on the, on the joists for noise reduction. We don't have to do it right now, we can, if you guys feel like it. Uh, since this That's is a same demo house, stairs, right? Or is it? Same is that too we're going to do on the stairs too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it on the stairs. Not not important because we're not going to use it to live in there. So uh, there's also plywood clips that go in between the on the subfloor. Yeah. Like you, we use these metal clips that go between. That's for the plywood not bending over time, like mm -hmm. not getting off this kind of a thing. Uh, we don't really need to put those in either since with for the next week that's not going to happen. That's like more like many years down the road, the stuff gets weaker and there's extra support there. Where would those go? Uh, so, if you have, so if you have a piece of plywood, so that's how a piece of plywood would sit. There's an other, another one staggered. You've got joists underneath that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The plywood clips <laughs> go work in between the joists because that's a, that's a surface that could wobble you know so these clips hold the edges together in between the joists like here to sure okay oh there not important for now i mean we could do it if you want to get the practice so i have a question um the wall modules that uh, become the stair support did we say we're going to do two of those mm -hmm. two so in the plan there there's like there's three, three and a half or something two and a half there's two and then a, a one that's 16 inches that one's not going to be there okay we're so just going to put two on the end and mm -hmm. the two all right yeah. I, get, I get it yeah uh do the one on one end and the other end like make this and you guys one behind there there's an extra so there's a little space in, in the middle so well, those will not be there no, say that again the first one yeah and then the back do one. this one and but do a four four foot one here so there's the little gap is here so it's better to have the little gap here than at the edge. It doesn't matter so much, but. Okay. Um, so that, that gap will be 16 inches between them then? Uh, if you put it on the edge, that means you're supporting, what's that mean? Um, that means if you put it right here, this space here, right. as opposed to starting right here, I'm just saying the one you're supporting this joist and that joist if you do that okay so then we build and the middle you already supported in between we don't build two with the identical modules then we build no just do two two yeah, of the two identical modules ones. spaced out at 16 inches okay. should suffice in between okay. yeah. yeah 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 well they got a space of 24 yeah. to be yeah, more specific okay. oh is it? okay very yeah. Good. fair enough yeah um but yeah that's that's what we got there yeah that must be so okay names <laughs> Allocation. I'll do stairs. Yeah, I think going about stairs. How many you need? That's great. That's great. Then I'll I'll do scaffolding. I'll start building out a uh, robust scaffolding, cool. safe safe scaffolding. Cool. Yeah, but I think that's that's after. Logan and Evan on the stairs. Like we can do like for yeah. example a double door, so that it's gonna be heavy weight. That's quick. I mean, that's going to be real quick. Um, yeah, cool. Um, once you do the double door, that's saw, sawing off the bottom plate and just cutting the plywood. That's just, yeah, two cuts in plywood, two or three cuts in plywood. Yeah, I, well, so if we have plenty of circular yeah. saws, but if you yeah. feel comfortable, yeah, you can you can just put a depth in it. it it'll be really easy. It's just slightly <laughs> outside of that. We'll have a line for you. We'll have a lead. Yeah. Um, it'll be easy peasy. You want to do it there? Yeah. Should we do it together? Is sure. that a two-man job? Yeah, it's a two-man yeah. job for chopping. Right. Yeah. Put my name on it. There are two. Carport door. That means putting the spacer, cutting out the plywood. That they should do both of those. Just because an hour and a half, that ain't going to take to do that double door. They can do just all the doors. Well, yeah. yeah, I believe in you. It's the allocation. No, it works for me. First floor windows. Like what, do, what does that mean? I'll, I'll, I'll do I don't know what it means. It kind of means the same thing, right? Marking and cutting. It's going to be 
Yeah. Okay, and there's the a. Yeah. Oh, I guess so. yeah. oh, yeah, the apertures on the uh, back end side, too. Right, so you got the cutting out in the front, and then you got to build the, the apertures to support the window from here yeah. and to support the weight from of the window above. So detailed ins detailed instructions are there. This is the work doc starting page 13, 14. Page 13, 14 has got detailed instructions. So building the rest of the window module in place. Yes, that's two, that's two of them. So yeah. that could use a couple of people. Uh, Paul, yeah. who else wants to do that? I'll do it. If there's any. Yeah, I mean, you guys can work in parallel, like. Uh, yeah. Map. yeah, and then we'll just make sure we have plenty of circular saws over there. I and then. My own, Ooh. Uh, I thought you were Christian. I brought my own circular saw. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's the crack team? <laughs> 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 Who's the crack team? I don't know. That's the problem with That's, um, you know, we've got already four inch wide strips. If you want to make it easy, that you don't have to cut, like, we got a bunch of these four inch wide strips. Just stick them in there. Let's see. Make it easy. You don't have to cut them. Okay, so we can do this whole but I, I yeah, cut those and then. The, the, so we're going to run into issues on the miter if everybody's going after cuts at the same time, though. So your window fills. Mm. Um, well, we should make sure we've got two stations set up. Cutting the plywood. Well, no, my, okay. so sliding miter, that's two by sixes. We've got two more saws of that capacity in the shop. Okay. So we'll set up two more of the we'll regular do. cutoff saws. They do two by six. I think okay. like uh, cutting the plywood. Plywood is circular. Yeah. Circular saw. But we don't have anyone already uh, allocated to like No, no specific person is doing plywood. We're kind of going by each each team cuts their own or collaborate on that. I think he was meaning sub for the sub floor. Are yeah, there any cuts for sub floor? Oh, yes. There's. Let's take a look at. Not too many. Ju um, I think there's only one or. Uh, yeah, they need to cut two or, the, uh, two or three. Right? Let's so, see. Uh, yeah. I think it's. Let's take a look at the build instructions again and uh, second story platform. This is from so you go Home 2. Four feet, four feet. Now the other one is going to be actually, I believe that's 4875. Okay, let's, let's figure this out. What is that? Is that 48.75 or is it uh, 48? Logic, what's the logic there? So we know that the door aperture starts exactly on the mid stud, which mid studs are 24 on center. If you go all the way to the edge of that, is there like a three quarter inch? Yeah, there is, because the middle of it is four feet. But if you're going all the way to the edge, that's where that uh, three-quarter inch comes from. Gotcha. Okay. What about the other side? I guess that's, is that controversy? Is it 72 or 72 and three-quarter? You're going, once again, two feet on center. Middle of that would be on center. It, it's got to be 72 and three-quarter. That's, that's not right there. I guess there was controversy before, but that should be... 72 and 3 quarter, does that make sense? Can somebody verify that? On center, it's 24s. It, it, ha it has so to be to because we, we measured the, the stairs from the corner. From yeah. The, the corner. And it is 0.75, right? Yeah. Where it was Six there, feet so. three and 3 quarters. So let's fix that right now. Get rid of that. It's well, 72.4. Yeah, because it's not ending at the middle, it's ending at the edge. So it's overlapping the edge on both sides. So what? Yeah, yeah, it's over the edge on both sides. So yeah, it's going to be a half knife. Those sections look like they're one piece. So to the middle, so here, here's the, let's do a quick drawing there. 
so here's your joist middle of it is 24 on center but we're not going to the middle we're going to here that's the plywood the whole thing, right? so it's six feet and three quarter so because because you want the ability, well you usually here have the ability is, to lay them on each side but this one we want flush right you want flush so that line that's the midline that's the two feet on center line so yeah the plywood is going to be six feet and three quarter yes but it's flush on the other side as well yes but it's tricky because the edge starts at zero okay. and the first but the from there, the there's a there's another board remember there's yeah a I, I guess i'm not clear on where the other board starts with this we're going to a 16 by 32 foot pad the edges exactly 32 exactly by 16. so think of it as there's four sheets length yep. uh, the ends here yeah clearly four feet because it's two feet on center we have this little controversy here because we've got an opening but this plywood ends on center so you need to take it over to the edge of the joist which is three quarter those medium so brown strips, are those two OSBs put together? Which ones? The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the long strips the that don't seem to have. Four. That's four, four of them. Plus. Four times eight. Four, eight. Okay. four times and eight. Okay, and the reason that everything's broken up the way it is is to line uh, the seams. Yeah, yeah, so the okay. seams do not line up. You're not lining up the seams, you're staggering them yeah. for better support. And that's why those. Yeah. Those are weird sizes. Right there, just to stagger them with the seams of the. Yeah, the weird sizes are basically four versus eight, okay. except for here, which, which you've got the aperture. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. yeah all of these are eights. Everything is eight outside of <laughs> one and two. Um, actually, um, hey, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing two sheets being cut into forty-eight. We're going to be three quarter inch short there. That means we have to waste another half. <coughs> Let's not do that. Let's just make it 48. Yeah, I, I, have, I have a well. I, I, uh, well, th that side I'm not sure of. But on the, that, that other side, because we lose well, an inch and a half for the main board and it's coming over and we're, we gain that inch and a half when we're putting it flush, I think that actual 72 might be the actual. But we, we can figure yeah, that out like, later. Like it's the it's not, I don't think it is. Six inches okay. is exactly in the middle of the joist. Six feet. Six feet is at the middle, yeah, exactly. The middle of the joist. Exactly. And you gotta, you gotta cover it completely. Mm -hmm. So it's 75. Right? Point yeah, point 0.75. Yes. Yes. And, and same here, but you see the point on this. Uh -huh. uh, one sheet second sheet but we're missing 0.75 so we have to rip another whole sheet let's save thirty dollars and just leave it at uh okay, okay, right. just leave it at 48. But we don't want to waste another sheet just for that so there will be like half of a um half a two by ten yeah it'll, it'll end like right halfway on the, on the joist that yeah. won't affect like walk a bit like safety on walking on the surface or anything well, you can at the no, end no, if no. we had the actual <laughs> stairs back there uh, it would matter actually because we have we have a uh, precise finish on that mm -hmm. for this purpose without uh, we'll do it properly in the other house mm -hmm. which uh, or that should be 48.75 on the other house already we've done that already mm -hmm. so flush. yeah it's flush it's a little detail because that on top of this we've got thin uh, thin flooring mm -hmm. and you want to have those details pretty accurate there yeah um, so there is cutting on the sub floor, but how many people do we have still okay. left? Fair enough. Um, what do we got? Sub floor is cutting two sheets. And that's e That's quick. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm going to do the the, sca the scaffolding since that's a really critical component to the uh, safety and we'll, you know move it on that second area. But we didn't get there yet. We got all these dependencies. So in other words, the scaffolding is not for today, like very likely. Um, second walls. I mean, 
Yeah, it's it's workflow. I mean, right now the second story walls. Yeah, we can stack those two together. That ain't no. Yeah. For the scaffolding, we're going to need the second story walls. So probably better do that. I, th I mean, the scaffolding is just like making a couple you platforms. You know? Yeah, if you want to do it, do it, man. But I mean, I can do no, the, the walls as well. I mean, we have to figure it out. Uh, because maybe we say, oh man, this is like too hard. Maybe we just get it from the store. I, I think it's. Excuse me? <laughs> Yeah, get it from the store. <laughs> okay. Um, so we can have a bunch of people working on the second story walls. Yeah. But who wants to cut this up for? If they need help with the filling in the cracks, I'll help with that. But they might not. It looks like you. I don't know. I would, I would put. Stair support. Why don't you guys, um, since the subfloor is like one cut, two cuts, three cuts. That's three cuts. I mean, that's. Yeah. Why don't you guys, can you guys do that? What? Oh, yeah. Subfloor. So yeah, do you see the cuts? Do you have a just saw, or is this just in the circular saw and chalk lines? Cir circular, circular saw is a lead. Circular or saw. Or maybe not a lead, uh, a laser, or like a, yeah, really. Yeah. Okay. Circular saw. Yeah. Good. Okay, so basically everyone on the... Do I have the... Who's left? So I, I could go, I could start on those. Uh, get people going on that. Should someone go to Menard too? Yeah. Yeah, if we have somebody, it's probably somebody who's not here, or... Me. Do we make a run this evening, or do we need it sooner? Yeah, because the windows seem like they're a so romantic we'll idea now, too. close early on Sundays, right? We and we can't, we, we, we should, are we planning on doing the windows? We're planning on doing the windows before they happen. Windows have to do, go, uh, no, they actually, we have to finish off the hole. So you guys, yeah, finishing after that we can wrap it. Mm -hmm. We don't need to install the window yet. In fact, you have to do the window after the wrap. Right. Yeah. So about windows, not ah. specifically. Yeah, it could go, we could go yeah. this evening. Yep. Okay, so um, I'd like to shadow and help um, with the crack team. With, the, with Paul and Christian's team and with Logan and Evan's team, so that I could learn those those things. Would that work? It would work. Okay. Um, do you want to shadow second story walls, or would you rather learn the other stuff? I'd, I'd rather learn the other oh, stuff, okay. but I'll leave second you. story walls because I missed that one last time. Okay. Time. Yeah, we'll get you. We'll get you spun up. I could actually get him spun up on the basic walls. Yep, and then I'll and then I'll do my little well, scaffolding. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that there. So. Oh yeah, I mean I'll I'll be there. So who else wants to join the second story walls? Because who else on it? Well, we don't have anyone else. Well, well Anthony is, isn't he? I'm free. I, I I'll be doing that. You'll be uh, doing those, yeah. So that's already in as well. And, uh, Three people there. Michael is really four because Anthony's gonna be doing it too. Because he won't be doing scaffolding yet. Mm -hmm. so uh, well, I'm going to get him started, showing him how to do it, and then I'm going to do the scaffolding, and then a little bit of... Okay. Yeah, sure. yeah so, and then go to the scaffolding and join us on the walls. We'll do. Yeah. It's ours. Uh, we can crack them out. Yeah. Yeah. But then everybody ends up in the second one. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as you, you got... Uh, as soon as that's done, yeah, everyone migrates to this. Yeah. The good news is, is all of that cutting and like putting that stuff together, it's not super labor intensive. It's just, you know, so it won't be like Ginger. crazy because we are coming up on that, that oh, new yeah. area. Yeah, and like um, we we're gonna finish the, the wall, you know, the morning, all the morning, but we're gonna. You don't know that. Have we? You underestimate me. <laughs> tomorrow we can finish it and start like building the stuff. Of course, not strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will 
All right. So any blocks on these? So here, on the, just to review, on the windows, very explicit instructions are available. Use those. Double door and carport, also the very explicit instructions are available. Only thing that I think it's in there <clears throat> it's not is in that spacer. Modules. Let's see, is that spacer mentioned in the dock? Um, let's see. I did the control F panel, tab, cripple. I searched for spacer with control F. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where there's that little space, you gotta get some wood in there so it's no longer a space. I'm not seeing it, but we do know there's. I'm not seeing it, so maybe. Uh, remember that. So you got that right? It's designed to have that space. It's on the on the. I'm a bit unsure about the carport door. It's that Eric, but it's about it's that the OSB installation and then making those set dimensions just like with the double one. There's a crack in between them. He's just talking about the carport door. And then so it can be. Is. Whatever fits. I, I yes. don't know what the exact. I, I couldn't find it there. Oh, it's a little bit. It's a little bit. Yeah, so we might stack up some pieces of plywood, but I didn't make it. Measure it. One arc three. I mean, you can tell the doors, they're the ones that have the hole in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? There's already a cut OSB for it. Okay, well then. Yeah. Uh, Natalie mentioned that last night. Uh, this all one cut. I think it's to the side. We'll get that installed and then. Uh, Should we just cut it or put it up? Put it up, but, but the cutout will be to that spacer, to the 2.25. So if somebody cut it, I'm not sure if they already. If it's already cut, just use it. We'll check it if it's 38 and 40. Yeah, if we already cut it, just use it because that three quarter we can we can plug that up. Their support, I think that's clear. 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 There is a plywood and three quarter beds that has to be caught up and we have to pull it over so it fits in the next one. So there's that three quarter measurement, a one inch measurement on the bottom, and then whatever you want to do. So whatever you want So those are the basic covers. Yeah, no, two quarter, six feet, six by twelve. Uh, these are long ass screens. Yeah. Yeah, um. On that Menard, we need to make that Menard list because we're going to need shorter screws for... Yeah. Oh yeah, short screws we can use. Um, they'd be useful. I mean, we can use the long ones too. Um, so actually, here, let's look at Menards real quick. Um, a better chalk line. Seems like all the ones are like janky or broken. Yeah, I, I looked to buy some yesterday at Walmart. We could use probably two or three. Menards, deck screws. And shock. T twenty five, one and five A. Do you have two pairs of glasses, one with a little safety thing on there? Yeah, or so you just clip it on there. Mm -hmm. One and five A. Yeah, uh, I think they all over the glasses. Yeah, this is just stuff that's not worried about I thought this was the car. No. This is um, looking top down the building, like top down the corner. Two inches of gray there. How about one five eighths? Does that work? Mm. I think that would as well. I mean, our, that, that's mainly for like plywood yeah. do a two yeah. plywood. Or plywood do a yeah. Let's get these. I got a bunch of them. It's not just like a computer clip on, it's actually like a special frame clip on. I think I'm afraid to do it here. But the thing about those, they're actually for yeah. impact. The lenses are. Oh, okay. So it's like full OSHA approval? Yep. Yep. You have a uh, novel idea. I like it a lot. Blast yeah, the everybody. Uses and the, is the side magnified or is it just clear? It's just clear. Okay. It's actually kind of. No, no, no. 
it's, it's made to be clear so you, like, you can't like do the live peripheral vision with them on it's supposed to put that That is an abstract curve. It does signify that it's not just a miracle. What's out there? I, um, like the edges are still there. And stuff. I have a sketch for like yeah, mobile app like design or like a UI yeah. stuff that's useful to be able to be like, oh yeah, this just continues and then just do it. Oh, yeah. okay, I got you. <laughs> you can probably get them online. Yeah, I like, um, it's been like, I like like UX design. Right? I'm, I'm yeah. a computer right now. Yeah, okay. I never quite have time for it. I like want to hop in the technical yeah. side. Um, I think now, now, you mean the technical yeah. side of how the user interacts with the technical uh, side of how right beautiful like every once in a while? Like, oh man, I should get those readers. Um, so, um, but or at some point I'll have to do it. A mixture. It's yeah. like for me, it's like, like what's your favorite? What's your favorite? Um, like what's my workflow? Maybe. You know, what's your favorite design that you reference as a when you're thinking about? Yeah, so it depends. I like to look at like All design right, levers or front levers because I, I the front end work I've done is usually in React, so it's like very much modular, um, component based design. Yeah, that's actually yeah, um, Angular uh, as well. Yeah, is is kind of the same thing that module. Yeah, so what I like about the, with, with React especially is people have built like component well, libraries, so you have like a lot of nice UX that's like perfected in yeah. component libraries. Yeah. So it's like if oh, I want a, a calendar or hey everybody, a yeah, yeah, I picked up some extra quick squares and some coverage pencils. I think it's yeah. probably the most important tool a carpenter can have. Is a good quick square. Yeah, so yeah. if you don't have one yeah. in your back pocket or tool belt, uh, three of you can grab. One. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have like a, a, a like a shared a shared tool area too, or it's like oh, it just makes it easier to steal one. Does anyone want more eggs? Sorry. No. What? More eggs? You There's like one. three scoops left. Uh, don't no. touch his scoops. That means one scoop. <laughs> um. But yeah. So I, like. There's different component levers that like I was using like material design. I actually don't like to use material stuff. Yeah, it's great on mobile apps. It sucks at scale on desktop, um, in my opinion. And I, I well, my thing is like desktop apps are great because you have a ton of like data density. Wait, 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 wait. You're talking about actual pull down our desk uh, apps on from your computer? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. So, like yeah, uh, I, I don't think it was ever designed for that. Wasn't it always designed for the cloud and kind of like yeah yeah like uh, like material design is great for mobile apps and I think that was the really initial design. I, my issue is I don't think it scales well for desktop um, because I, I just like I like a more denser interface like just personally like when I'm working on a desktop app but yeah, I like having a toolbar that has things in the other the cloud. I don't like material design. It's like, oh, click this like big circle add button to like drop down the sidebar and then.